it, but he said his, they were like, what? Is, what is he talking about? Is this the rhythm of the night? He's like, yes, that's it. Is it the rhythm of the? You haven't seen that? Nah, oh, I gotta show you that, bro. Yeah. It's, he's like, yes, that's it. Is this a Reebok? Oh, it's Reebok. Is this a Reebok or tonight? He's and the, and the radio host is like, what? Is this a Reebok? No, nah, I never heard that. Are you talking about this song? Is this the rhythm of the night? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, that's it. Hey, dash though, I can talk my ass off. Hey, smoke you what you seen, and I'll tell you what I saw. Hollywood, what you think, and I'll tell you what I thought. And we can talk about it all when we hear on trash though. Hey. What's going on, everybody? We're back with another episode of the Trash Talkers Podcast. We made it. We made it, Smart Joe. Yeah. What it is, what it ain't, what it look like, what it do, what it smell like, what it always might be. I don't have a singular phrase to answer all that. Give me one. Just say yes. Yes. All right. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, let's spin up with you, Broski. Ah, not much. Yeah, football season's over. It's kind of boring, actually. <laughs> well, you're a football guy. That's why MMA is the yeah. better sport. Maybe I'll take up NASCAR. No, just watch MMA. A lot MMA. of people seem to be getting into NASCAR these days. Just watch MMA. It, it, it seems to be... I used to watch MMA, but I got bored with it. Why? I don't know. Just not enough. I mean, yeah, there was drama then, but once, like, Connor was gone and... He's about to fight uh, Michael yeah. Chandler. Yeah, once every six years or something. <laughs> John Jones, you know. He's the heavyweight champion. He's and I never got into the Colby Covington. Oh and man, all that. I'm a, I, I can name name a, a fighter. I'll know it. No, I'll know it. Real good, let, let's let's just hop right into it. Mm-hmm. Again, guys, leave your birthday, just the month and the year that you were born, and we will read the craziest stories that come from Florida. And it's not called W or what is? It's called WTF, but it's not what the it's what the floor 100 percent. so mm-hmm. shall we hop into wtf yep. real quick mm-hmm. all right so shout out to uh it's not wtf yet we're reading the comments oh, my, my bad <laughs> y'all my, my brain's messed up i'm sorry yes leave your, leave your birthday down in the comment section but let's read the top three comments mm-hmm. from last podcast which was um uh, was it uh, was um what was it? Our top three songs that we, we just can't, listen can't to. hear. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, uh, number three most like uh, <clears throat> comment from that uh, podcast was from Kadoom eight four three. Kadoom eight four three. Most like or third most like comment on that podcast says, "I don't post much in your comments, but this is." This I had to. I'm 54, and if I hear Boston more than a feeling one more time, <laughs> I really could hang myself. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Keep it up. Edit. Of course, you can he- let your kids listen to Kiss. They're they're a glam band. Mm-hmm. You can listen to them where you can listen to them where. Okay, you can listen to them where they only. What the heck? You need me to read it? No, you can listen to them where they only wear makeup. They were wearing, dude, you're common. They were only they were wearing. Wait, bro, what the heck? Let me see. No, you can listen to them when, where they're on, where they're only. What the hell is going on? Here? Look, am <laughs> I tripping? It? it says I don't post much on your comments, but this I had to. Uh, edit. Of course, you can let your kids listen to Kiss. They are a glam band, and that thing pops up right in the middle of it. Do you see why um, I had trouble? <laughs> why everyone gives them a pass? I don't know. The band I would question letting children listen to is on your T-shirt, oh, Venom. Oh, Venom. Yeah, I think. I and you were wearing that. a tool shirt, I think. Yeah, yeah, but Venom, yes, you know. Yeah, I think you can let your kids listen to. Maybe there's a few songs you could yeah, avoid. Yeah, of but... course. But yeah. All right. So the number two most liked comment from that podcast comes from um, Karen Karen Coggs. Listen, I want to mm. say this. Mm. Shout out to every woman out there whose name is named Karen. Oh, yeah. I feel bad for women, like good women who are named Karen. Mm-hmm. Because the word Karen has gotten a bad under. Rap. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. has. Like, shout out to all the good Karens out there. Absolutely. But yes, Karen Cog says three songs I can't listen to anymore is Freebird, <laughs> Footloose, and uh-huh. We Built This City. 
We built this city on rock and roll. I only know one of those, and that's Freebird. Freebird. That's. <laughs> I mean, I get that, right? Because if you go back in time, like every concert, people are like play Freebird. Right? You know, especially if it's a cover band. We've heard or it. Leonard Skinner. We've heard it a thousand times. Yeah. And the number one most liked comment from that podcast is from Borna. Berna Campbell, shout out to Berna Campbell. <laughs> Berna Campbell said, "Beavis and but you guys are the Beavis and Budheads of YouTube." Absolutely. And there's a reply to this. Shout out to mm-hmm. Kim Boober, Boober, or Boober? Boober, Kim Boober. Shout out to Kim Boober because Kim Boober says, "Yes, they are." A spiral out Sunday. They talked about that, and everyone came to the conclusion that Hollywood is Beavis mm-hmm. and Smokey is Budhead. Yes, absolutely. So I'm Beavis. Mm-hmm. I need TV for my vocal. <laughs> Absolutely, but much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So listen, guys. Today we got an interesting topic. Again, leave your birthday and your birth month, your birthday, your birthday and the year you were born down in the comment section. No, not the year. I'm sorry. Help. The month and the day. The month. No. Yes. The yes. Month the month and, the, and day. the day down in the comment section. We will read what happens on what the Florida. And now today's mm. topic. Okay. Smoke dog. Mm. Did social media kill? mainstream media music. that is the question and the reason i brought up this topic is because we cover a lot of bands on here that get a ton of traction in the music industry that are not on radio stations okay we see it now more than ever because if you think about it back in the 80s 90s on back 70s 60s you only heard in general what was on the radio right yeah. You had to go to the record sta- uh, record li- uh, store. Rick. He was about to say the record station. <laughs> well, I mean, if you go back far enough, you actually had to because they would print at the record station, the you, record label. You uh, remember, record... remember, remember, uh, <laughs> hey, this is 95.5. Like, hey, call in and let us. Oh, dude, you know the best uh, uh, scenario of that? I want to hear, uh, y'all, please tell me. Trash Talkers, please tell me y'all know this this Instagram short. Is this a, is this a, is this a night? Or it's Adidas, it's a, it's a night. You, you ain't heard that, that one? No. Is he was a, a Hispanic guy called in, and he was like, and they were like, "What song do you want us to play? Is this a Adidas or it's a Nike?" And they're like, "Is this Adidas, Adidas or Nike?" It, but he said his, they were like, "What? Is, what is he talking about? Is this the rhythm of the night?" He's like, "Yes, that's it. <laughs> is it the rhythm of the? You haven't seen that? No, I oh, I gotta show you that, bro. Yeah. It's, he's like, yes, that's it. Is this a Reebok? Oh, it's Reebok. Is this a Reebok or tonight? He's and the, and the radio host is like, what? Is this a Reebok? Or no, I never heard that. Are you talking about this song? Is this the rhythm of the night? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, that's a, that's great. But go ahead, sorry. But yeah, if you go back far enough, you know that was it, and it was basically called a monoculture back then. You know, everybody seemed to be in the same things because that's the only access they had to media. Whatever was coming through the TVs, whatever was coming through the radio. So you see certain bands, certain artists that were all huge during that time. time yeah. It seemed like the whole world was into it. Everybody listened to michael jackson right everybody listened to prince everybody listened to a lot of those but it became more saturated into the 90s when underground bands were starting to gain a little traction through the internet that was coming up and wow so maybe the question we should be asking did the internet kill mainstream yeah yeah music yeah see i was thinking social media because it it seemed to be in the 2000s there was still that monoculture that was going on because You know, people would share a certain amount of things. They would share what they know. But then once social media came in, people started finding these underground bands because the the bands could put out their own music through social media. Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. We sold records all across the country and even out of the country in certain places. Never got played on a radio station. Never got... Well, actually, we did on, uh, like, uh, college or... um, underground yeah like, like uh, internet stations yeah. yeah there were internet radio See, okay stations. you mentioned internet stations is that mm-hmm. not the same thing as uh no terrestrial yeah no terrestrial radio no not at all because once you know the internet was popular you could start your own internet radio station and play whatever you wanted to well then my question to you would be is terrestrial radio even a thing anymore 
No, no, it's still on the air. Just not as but many people who listen, listen to like, it. Uh, trash talkers out there, seriously. Who gets in their car? Because I, I would assume, and I would willing to bet, willing to bet money that you put, when you get in your car, you hook your auxiliary cord up, or you do Bluetooth, yeah, Bluetooth. to your phone, right? Yeah. How many trash talkers out there literally turn on the radio? I, very few people do. I do know. Uh, one of the guys I work with, every time he uses the truck, I get in and the radio station is blaring. And I'm like, who who listens to the radio Dude, I'm anymore? the same way. I'm the same way. I'm like, <laughs> why are we listening to this? Yeah, like, you don't have to listen to what they offer anymore. I mean, unless you're just into that. I mean, mainstream music is still mainstream for a reason. And there's certain artists out Damn. there that a lot of people still listen to. It's just... There will never be another Elvis, in my opinion. You know, people try to say Taylor Swift, like, oh, that's She's the, the big, new one. She's big, though, bro. Yeah, she is, and a lot of people like it. But they don't have the traction that Michael Jackson had, that yeah. artists had back in the day, because that was the only game in town. Yeah, but you're talking, again, this is like a, it's like a scale. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're looking at, from back in the day, the scale, there was no internet. There was no social media. It was just, hey, this is what you're... A lot of people could say it's propaganda. It's like, this is what you're going to listen to. Like, remember, me sense. and... We did a podcast not too long ago. It might have been a podcast or a, a, reaction to a, a reaction to a song that we did. And we were like... Or I said, I hated... Hi, my name is... Yeah. And, but once I was... That was last week. Okay, last week. Yeah. But last... But... I was force fed it so much to where it was like, you are going to like this song, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, yeah, that was during that time. But yeah. but now that absolutely happened to Eminem. He took advantage. I mean, who knows if he would have came out in 2020 rather than 1999 or whatever it was? Yeah. If he'd have came out then, like, would he have blown up like he did? Good. Okay. Do the same thing with Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. Do which would she? Excuse me. I think so. I mean, I think because you, you, there's still going to be a certain amount of traction you get from having the, the record labels back you, right? But there must be something because I don't listen to Taylor Swift. But I she's really one of the hugest artists on earth. Yeah, I really don't know her music, though. Like, uh, I do know, what was it? Shake It Off. Shake, shake It Off. Shake, shake It Off. Come on. Like, I think that's the only song I know. And maybe I would recognize more if I sat down and went through her catalog. But, well, I mean, that that's kind of a symptom of it right there. Like, you know, they're pushing it out to everyone, so you're going to hear it you're at some point hear, in time. That's what I'm saying. It's a force-feeding thing. It's like, mm-hmm. but is do we blame the record labels for that? Like, yeah. Do we? Yeah. Because they're like, hey, you, we put X amount of dollars into this song. Mm-hmm. We put X amount of dollars into getting these producers, getting these radio stations, getting yeah. these engineers. So now we're going to put X amount, X amount of dollars into these radio stations to play them worldwide. Yeah. So you're going to enjoy it. And yeah. even though you may hate it, but if you hear it enough. <laughs> you hear it enough, it'll grow on you. Exactly. Yeah. I think that happens to a, a certain amount of artists, but I, I don't guess it's any secret to people that back in the day, the way you got, I mean, I'm sure it's still that way, but nobody listens to terrestrial radio, but how you got on the, the radio was not just organically. You start playing at a club and people like it and yeah. they start requesting it at the station, which you could have done that, but most of what they played was paid for by yeah, the record the labels. Record. Dude, that's kind of effed up if you ask me, man. Yeah. It's like... Yeah, it's it's almost like politics, right? It will all you're right. A hundred percent. It's like politics. But here's my question. How far back do we go? Like how far back did the, yeah, listen, Eddie Bravo, one of the greatest uh he beat Hoyler Gracie twice. <clears throat> Excuse me. He beat Hoyler Gracie twice in MMA. But he was he he was in a band and he's like if you look at radio, radio at one point could just have been propaganda. Like you think some dude said, some dude just came up and said, "Oh, I have a rate. I have a way to communicate with m- millions of people. So I'm just gonna play the songs I like." Mm-hmm. It technically wasn't that, was it? Well, in the early days, yeah. you think so? You yeah. you don't? Uh, no. In the early days, you started like because the, the medium was no, new. Wait, 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 think about the first person who had a radio, mm-hmm. who who had a radio station. Yeah. Why did they play those songs? Was it because they enjoyed those songs? Yeah. Or is, I think so. You think so? I mean, yeah, it had to be organic back in the very first radio station, right? 
there i mean i'm sure the very first station was actually just for news or something so that they could broadcast the people but to get people's attention to get uh, uh, sponsors to start sending you money for this radio see, station. That's propaganda. You, you gotta get... play something that everybody wants to hear. But how do you know you want to hear it until you hear it? Well, we... hey, what do you mean? Me? Okay. Let's say you're the first person to ever have a radio yeah. station. You're the very before yeah. news, and yeah. you're like, you know what? I want to play music. Mm-hmm. So you play music. Like, how do they? How do people know? Uh, dude, I think that's all propaganda. Well, I, I mean, they they were still buying little records or something. Actually, I don't so, know. We'd have to look at the timeline to see if records were even out exactly before the first and, radio station. And not station. only that, but you would also have to look at like, okay, this record bought or this many people thought bought this record. This many people bought that record, so they want to play it. But mm-hmm. it's like at the same time, it's like. If you're that person that started that first radio station, it's like, what's, were they paid off? Were they paid off to say, hey, play this song four times on the hour? I think that came about later. I think at first they're like, okay, if we're going to start playing music, we're not just going to talk. I mean, originally it was probably live music. Like, you know, they start a radio station and it's probably only playing from like, Eight in the morning till eight at night, you know, because it's probably one or two people running the entire thing. So they would, all right, so maybe the six o'clock hour, we can have a band in here to play. They didn't have records at this point in time, maybe. And we'd have to look at the, the chronology of it to make sure if this is right. But if this is the way have, I would assume if they didn't have it records, worked out. If they didn't have records, how'd they play it? That's what I'm saying. They would have a radio station for information, for news, and they would come in and talk. Yeah. You know, it was just not even DJs because there wasn't discs to be flipping. So <laughs> <laughs> so you come in and they're like, okay, we're going to start having a music hour. Every 6 p.m. after you eat dinner, you can turn on the radio and hear live music. So they'd start playing that. And then they're like, okay, well, we are able to record onto records now so we can send you records of our artists so that you can play them all throughout the day that's crazy to me dude but at some point in time you know they're like well we have to play what's popular right but what so makes that we it can popular? get sponsors who what what or how, whoever sells the most records but how did they find that out from the record stores. I mean, there was still... So you mean to tell me there was an individual guy, or, or multiple, maybe multiple... I mean, I'm sure they had ways of keeping track of who was buying what Ooh. music. Like, uh, what's the people that used to come to your house with the cable boxes and... Oh, uh... What was it? Uh, come on, come on, come on. God dang it. Come uh, on. Uh, not it was the, the, the Nielsen the... houses. Yes. Nielsen. Yeah. The, so they would go to their house and be like, oh, you watch this. You think they did that, had the same thing with radio? Yeah, well, uh, well, see, like I said, at some point in time, they were capable of recording. They'd have a live artist in to play, right? And they would record it right there in the radio station. And that radio station would ship out records to sell. Mm -hmm. So however many they sold, that's going to be like, okay, that's my most popular artist. That's the most popular record I have. There wasn't big record deals at that point in time because it was a new medium. So you only got paid for coming in and playing that one time, and that radio station would sell that record right. to the record stores. But then now it goes back to the original question. Mm-hmm. Did social media Yeah, kill... that's what I was building up to. Okay, yeah. build, hey, build that Lego set. <laughs> go right, ahead. I'm going to try this for the third time. Right, go ahead, go ahead. At some point in time, sponsors come in, and okay. they want to pay if, to put their advertisements on the radio, so they got to play whatever's going to draw the most listeners, right? So they're going to play what's popular. But if you move a little farther down the line, at some point the record labels are like, okay, so we're putting all this money in. We can do promotion through the radio stations, right? And then we can actually tell them which mm-hmm. artists to play because they're getting money from us. We become the sponsor. Mm-hmm. The record label is paying the radio stations to play their specific artists. But having done that, that creates the monoculture exactly. of music. That exactly. Everybody's listening to the same, same artists. Thing. Now, Man. internet comes in. Oh. And you can find any artist you want right there on your desktop and later on on your phones people are finding out i don't have to listen to what's on the radio 
I can listen to this underground band who's got 30 listeners from Germany, you know? <laughs> and jam it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So then there's this more and more artists that keep popping up on social media. Mm -hmm. And they're doing something. They're making money now because they have listeners all across the world without ever getting on radio. So in a sense, now has the internet killed or has the internet or social media, social media has it killed mainstream music in a way you could say it broadened it it, it broadened the the audience it did like it, it did it, it make the did. audience bigger to certain bands who were very niche like mm -hmm. like oh i have you ever heard of a band called the lighting light switches <laughs> you yeah. know like I've, I've never heard of that band yeah but if the Social me if social media is dude, you, oh my god, that's actually a very good. Oh, point. dude, this is going in like so many different directions yeah, in my head right now. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, um, me too. It, it, what's crazy is like you know the song I play. Uh, like when you were going through something, I was like, Go, it's verbatim. Yeah, and oh, it's shake. How do you think I found that song? Um, probably through TikToks or something. I don't have TikTok. But well, Instagram, it was Instagram shorts. Yeah. I, I saw, and I'm like, and I heard it enough through it, and I'm like, this mm -hmm. song is fire. And yeah. then I found the song, and it's so hard to do it because it's like you have to, you have to, on an Instagram <laughs> short, it's only 60 seconds. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, all right, a little I, clip of the song. Exactly. And you got to figure out what that song is from it. Yeah, <laughs> and, the, and you hear three words. All right, let me type these three words in. And it comes up, and it's like, oh, that's it. But yeah. it's like, is that a bad thing though? Like, I mean, no, I don't think so at all. I think it's good for the music industry. You don't have these monopolies in the music industry Ooh. anymore. And in a sense, do those underground bands who gain tons of listeners without ever being on the radio, without being on MTV, if MTV even plays music anymore, <laughs> but without that, are they still becoming mainstream artists without radio? Do you need radio to become mainstream? Though? I don't think you do anymore. I don't think so. I th do but it. if everybody's in, yes. then it's not mainstream exactly. anymore. <laughs> and, and you could also, like, with hip-hop, hell, you could say that with any, with any genre. Mm -hmm. If you are, if you have a catchy tune mm -hmm. and you put it on social media, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, if... If you have it very catchy, eventually you you don't even that your song may not even be played on the radio. But for you to have that catchy tune on those four big social media websites or mm -hmm. social media platforms, yeah, they they spread, they go, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, in a sense, if everybody's mainstream, then the mainstream oh. doesn't exist. Wow, if everybody's it can, I mean, mainstream implies that it's a select group, it's exclusive. Yeah. So does mainstream exist these days? That's what I'm saying. Does I it? I don't know that it really does anymore. I mean, yeah, there's still big record labels out there that are going to push certain artists, you know, Taylor Swift, Beyonce, whoever. All right, well, well, let me ask you this. Who are the top five biggest artists in planet Earth right now? Oh, I'm probably two of them right there, right? But but here's the crazy thing: thirty years ago, twenty years ago, you would have been about this, 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 this. Oh yeah, of yeah, Radio. yeah. You would know right offhand. Yeah. Now you're nowadays like, it's oh, like I don't know. I'd have to look at the numbers. Exactly. I mean, you could think of artists that have sold a lot of records. Like, yeah, Eminem sold two hundred fifty million. The Beatles sold five hundred million, or whatever it is. But are they the biggest? Like right now, as of today. Yeah, right now, no. You can't like. Would you say Taylor Swift is, is in the... I think so. I mean, she's on every single channel on TV. Well, I think a lot of that. <laughs> they they pushed world. her on everybody, I'll tell you that. But then you got, like, what are the Suicide Boys? God, I should have blanked that out. Yeah. The Sue Blank Boys. <laughs> the S Boys. The S Boys, <laughs> yes. They they probably have a cult following that oh, they do. way exceeds they, Taylor Swift. I mean, my daughter went to a concert with the S Boys and uh, Ghost Man. They were Ghost in, They were in the arena. Dude, Ghost Man is huge. <laughs> yeah, Ghost apparently Man so. Is huge. I was, she told me she was going to that concert. I was like, they're playing an arena? Did you take her? Did nah. You, no? Nah, she went with her friend. But I was like, hmm. dude, that kind of music back when we started would have been playing the Masquerade. The masquerade, which holds Not about an arena. 500 people. <laughs> that's, a, that's the prolificness of it. Yeah. Because of social media. These artists that are in that genre, which was basically just an alteration of the genre we used to do. Yeah. Horrorcore. Yeah. 
so they're playing arenas. They're doing That's arena great. tours. I like and they're not that. on the radio. And, and I like that. Yeah. I like that. I like the fact that you could be so. Oh, dude, a great example. Uh, uh freaking uh, the DJ uh, Skrillex. Okay, Skrillex. Not a country uh, singer, not yeah. a rapper, no. not a, a pop, not blues, not yeah. bluegrass, none of that. He's just a DJ that's making dubstep music. Yeah. Trash talkers. How many radio stations do you know that just play nothing but dubstep? <laughs> none. Nah. Right? Maybe a college station out there or something. Yeah, but that, that radio station is probably this big. Exactly. But for him to blow the Oh, yeah. And also Marshmallow. Yeah. Like, think about how many DJs that are in just dubstep. Yeah. Hell, the Blue Man. Have you ever heard the Blue Man group on the radio? No. <laughs> I've never seen that. I don't know that. Did they do? They cut songs? They cut records? My point is, you know them, though. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know them. That's Everybody the po- talks about their Vegas performances. I mean, they will hit on them damn trash cans so <laughs> yeah. damn hard. But they're so huge, and it's not because of terrestrial radio. Yeah, exactly. It's because of either word of, word of mouth. Or... If they were around 60 years ago, nobody would know. Who nobody. They the only people would know if you happen to catch a show in Vegas on the night they're performing. Yeah. yeah but now everybody knows who they are. Trash so talk. they're mainstream. Yeah. Trash and talk they're not mainstream at the same let time. Let us know if the Blue, Blue, Blue Man group are still doing They are still doing things, I think. <laughs> I suppose, yeah. I don't know. I haven't heard much news lately, but like you said, we do know about them. We do know about them. And is that, be- is that from word of mouth? Uh, of course it is. Well, it is, but it's through the internet. Trash talkers, you guys let us know. Blue Man Group, Skrillex, <laughs> Marshmallow, are they big just because of word of mouth, or uh-huh. is it from terrestrial radio? Let us know. Yeah, well, it can be, right? I mean, who's playing, who's that, playing that on the radio? Yeah. Like, you're not in, in traffic driving. Oh, that's that new Blue Man Group. Let's turn this up. <laughs> you're not doing that. <laughs> You're not doing that. So no. it has to be. I think you're right. I think you're yeah. 100% right. 100% yeah. right. So like, let's get into some WTF. And let's again, guys, leave your birthday down in the comment section. Just leave your... Okay, help me out here. Hmm. Your birth... Leave, <laughs> leave the day and the month of your birthday. Yes, just leave the in day... In the comment section. Down in the comment section. All right, you ready? Yeah. Okay. Excuse me, guys. I've got brain fog a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, why is that showing up here? Uh, okay, you ready for this one? Yep. All right, shout out to Mr. G Monkey Will Rule You. G Monkey. Shout out Mr. G Monkey Will Rule You. Uh, November 7th, homies. All right. November November 7th. Smokey, what the Florida for November 7th? All right, let's see what happened. Ooh, oh, all right. Uh, This is is a tough one here. Uh, Florida man jumps into crocodile pit, gets bit, and claims he was held captive. By the crocodile? Apparently. A uh, Florida, man, Florida man took a dangerous plunge Tuesday, and it was all caught on camera. He was captured on surveillance video, jumping into a pond filled with crocodiles. But that's not even the most shocking part of the oh, story. Lord. It all happened in an animal farm in St. Augustine. Uh, the man was in the enclosure for hours, so he must have been in a, Why? a facility Why? that harbors these uh, and the video shows he jumped right into the water. Uh, crazy, absolutely crazy. And uh, one tourist said, "How could somebody be that stupid?" All the workers at the farm found the next morning that a pair of shorts and Crocs, the shoes. So the uh, alligator ate him. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Wow. They thought it was just a prank until they saw blood. Oh. Oh wow. Uh, they call police. That's when they look back at the footage. The man, who turns out to be very lucky, was attacked by one of the 12-foot crocodiles before he was seen trying to get over a fence to escape. Neighbors found the man limping around the next day, mumbling and about <laughs> mumbling about being <laughs> held captive. An alligator held me captive. <laughs> man. Well, sh- he made it, luckily. Luckily. Man, yeah, that was a pretty dumb move, bro. Shout out to our Floridians, but god dang, y'all need to chill out. Yeah. You ready for the next one, Smoke Dog? Yep. All right, we got uh, we got Jangles. Shout out Jangles, mm-hmm. 1839. Jangles says, uh, wasn't that Charlie Puth in that song with Wiz Khalifa? Also, uh, going to try this for the umpteenth huh. time. Well, we got you this time, Jangles. Mm-hmm. My birthday is January 25th. Smokey, what the Florida for January 25th? 
Yeah, now it makes me think. Was the the Wiz Khalifa song? Yeah, because you said Ed Sheeran. Was it not Ed Sheeran? I don't think it was. Who was it? Apparent. Of course, I always thought it was Ed Sheeran. Hell, we have Google at our fingertips. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna be looking up the story while you do that. <laughs> uh, featuring Charlie. Wow, really? Charlie Puth. So yes, Jangles is right. I always thought that was Ed Sheeran, but learn something new learn every something day. Learn something new every day. All right. Oh man, we haven't covered this story on WTF, but we did a long time ago. What let's you got? let's revisit this one. Yeah, let's do one. it. Let's do it. <laughs> Florida man known for Easter Bunny fight arrested after hit and run. Remember the Easter Bunny yes, fight? Yes, that Easter yeah. Bunny was working his ass. <laughs> it was, yeah. <laughs> Everybody thought he was a good Samaritan. Yes. But apparently we got this going on now. A uh, Florida man who became a video sensation after fighting a man on the street while dressed as the Easter Bunny was arrested and tried to use the costume to elade, the elude capture. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we uh, fourteen still twenty two. We got a guy uh, suspect out. He's dressed in Easter Bunny costume. There he is, right there. <laughs> he became an overnight phenomenon when a video cap- video captured him fighting a man or an Orlando last year, and this was from twenty twenty. So uh, earlier this month, he was driving a motorcycle when he ran a stop sign and crashed into a carport and fleeing the scene. Uh, uh, I thought. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, he was spotted. They spotted a gray car driving away. I'm trying to leave out his name because they use it a million times here. All right. Um, he was laying in the back seat of a car. Uh, when a deputy went to arrest him, he denied it. I wasn't in any crash. I am the Orlando <laughs> Easter Bunny. Oh no! <laughs> Google it. He says. No. <laughs> All right. Uh, the Orlando Sentinel reports authorities ask him to remove his costume before arresting him. He is charged with leaving the scene of a crash involving property damage. Jangles, that's your WTF. Mm-hmm. You're what the forty. So, you want one more? Yeah. All right. We got Jason J T D seventy nine Dune eighty eight. Jason Dune, we yeah. know who you are. Or Jason Dunn, actually. March second. All right. What the Florida? March second. March second. Oh, 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 oh damn! Another, like another popular guy, another internet sensation. Florida man known as the Monkey Whisperer. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Sentence I'm done. for trafficking protected primates. Wait, wait, wait! He was trafficking monkeys. Yeah. Can you traffic monkey? Apparently not without a license. Huh. I mean, the the zoos have to get them at somehow, right? But yeah. apparently, you have to be licensed to Dude, do it. Dude, you're a sick. MF or if you're just having a, like a obsession with tra- like monkeys like why are you doing that yeah why are you doing that I don't know Tampa Florida uh, uh, judge has sentenced the guy uh, aka the monkey whisperer to five years probation to include eight months home confinement five years for probation. one count of conspiracy to violate the Lacey Act and three counts of violating violating the Endangered Species Act. Oh. As a part of his sentence, the court also ordered Hammonds to pay. Oh, I just said his name. <laughs> pay ninety thousand dollars to got the U.S. Life. Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, the Lacey Act Reward Fund. Yeah. Uh, this goes on. This is an extremely yeah. long story. Uh, it was investigated by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Uh, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Service Conservation Commission (laughs) and the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. Uh, But yeah, uh, apparently he was trafficking. Listen, shout out to... The Monkey Whisperer was trafficking primates. Shout out to the Monkey Whisperer, but don't do that. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. And and shout out to all our trash talkers out there who happen to be Floridians. But God dang, dude, what the heck? (laughs) What's going on down there, man? (laughs) Smoke you want to read another oh, one. I know. So bad. There's some good ones on Give here. Give me one more. F it. Give yeah. me one more. Yeah, because that one wasn't as exciting. Uh, caught on camera. Florida man says he was speeding home for news about Putin. Oh, I need to hear. Oh, CNN's about to play it in 20 minutes. I need to watch this. <laughs> I got to see that Putin conference. 
A uh, Florida man who was pulled over for speeding told the deputy he had to get home to find out more about what Russian President Vladimir Putin was planning. A Fletcher County deputy said he pulled over the driver in Palm Coast last Thursday for running wow. a stop sign going about 50 and a 30. Deputy's body cam caught the moments when that driver gave his excuses. Here it is in quotations. I just found out that Putin just said he's going to launch nuclear thermal war hey. against the world. And I was trying to get back home to find out what's going on. We can't hate on this guy. This dude probably was a legitimate oh, well, dude that thought, hey. If I he thought nuclear war was going to happen, he, he you won't... might give him a break. Yes. they. I guarantee you they did. I guarantee you mm -hmm. they did. Those but are... as we know now, as having some time pass that. Didn't it happen. didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So he probably got a little bit of jail time, but not much. But, hey, <laughs> yeah. he wanted to protect his family and his loved ones. Or at least him. a speeding ticket. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Guys, again, what the Florida, we do that every podcast. Remember, to just leave your birthday and the birth year down in the comment section. We'll read the craziest uh, stories that come from Florida mm -hmm. on your birthday down in the comment section. And also, guys, let us know, did social media really kill music? Mainstream music. Mainstream music. Mm -hmm. Did it really? I think it the... expanded music. To tell you the truth. If you ask me, I would say the mm -hmm. same thing. Hundred percent. You got anything else, small dog? No, I think that's it for that. That's it, guys. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with us and spending some time with us on the Trash Talkers podcast. Catch us next Tuesday. And with that being said, my name is Behringer Hollywood Six. Bye. I am Larry Smokey Ramirez. Kevin. And we are over. And out. Deuces. Yeah.